start recording. There we go. Okay. Okay, sorry. What just happened was that I realized I've been recording as MP4 this entire time. Uh, and that's a bad idea because if you don't know, uh, when you use OBS Studio, if your computer crashes or something and uh, you're recording with MP4, uh, it completely just, like, it, it corrupts the video file. So, ha, we're not doing that. Uh, the, the ones we recorded are fine. But I am now recording an MKV so that if I crash somehow, we're good. Okay. Fun fact of the day. Anyways. Can you imagine? Okay. Also, it's funny that you say uh, when Elliot joined, because Elliot immediately left for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure if they're on the bus or what, but anyways. It changed to race laws log slaw, which means down face is purple, which means the the not real world, like the the fiction, the fiction, the cool shit. The dream, the, 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 the fiction, the world. Okay. <clears throat> so there you go. There's race laws, log hemi. I'm trying to, th uh, or yeah, race laws, log hemi, race laws, log slaw. Um, uh, what else should be mentioned about this? Uh, Yeah, okay, hold on, let's go here. Set this to black again. Okay. All right, hold on, let's do it like this actually. Is Elliot back? Yes, hi. Uh, hold on. I have you muted on my end. Let me unmute you. Okay, there we go. You're unmuted, so now I can hear you if you were talking before. Hi. Oh god, what's happening? Hello. There's the Elliots. Hello. It is you. Hi. I'm rambling about Tomalore and my voice hurts at this point. It's, it's like hurting my brain. Okay. Guys, look at this. It's the thing. Okay, so. All right. So. He, here we have. Hold on, Elliot, turn off your mic. <laughs> here we have, here we have the, the, the. The real, the real. This is this is where we are. It's like it's like that's us. This is us right here. This is us. It's it's the pl it's the plane. Okay, and then you have the other one. Now you you may think oh it's 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 like inverted. No, it's it's perpendicular because of fucking course it is. Why wouldn't it be a perpendicular? Um. And you might be wondering why it's perpendicular. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just staring at uh, <laughs> what Curve is saying. It's making me very excited. Um, so let's just, you know, let's label this real quick. We got negative, not negative eight. We got negative infinity. And we got infinity. We got zero in the middle. So yes, uh, Caleb, and you're right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So th this is this is a plane. Uh, you know, numbers. You know, you can count them. You can count them on your fingers of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are numbers. Is that fucking awesome? Is that so sick? Um. There's weird numbers. There's weird numbers. Uh, if you are a fucking nerd, you know about this. And in fact, actually, if you're a Zone for 40 nerd, you know about this. Uh, kind of. I, I, I don't know if you knew this was a real thing or not. But there are imaginary numbers 
They're literally called that. Imaginary numbers. There, there are like other names for them as well, but they exist. And imaginary numbers is what happens when you, um, when you try to be like, oh, what happens if we square root negative one? If I, if I remember correctly. Um, because yeah, so because it's it's a long story, but basically, with the way math is, um, the reality is is that there's some questions that are weird uh, with math. Like you'll be like, oh, how does um, like like you know like okay, think of it this way. If you want to know how many apples you have on the table, how many apples you have on the table, the table apples. You want to know? You want to know? <laughs> you have five apples on the table. One, two, three, four. Or actually, hold on. Here's how I should do this. How many cubes do I have on this table? How many cubes do I have on this table? One, two, three. If I take away one, I have two cubes. Wow. If I take away two cubes, I have none. Why would we need a number for that? Why would we need one? How many apples do I have? I just, I don't have any. What are you talking about? People used to think like that. Um, people used to feel like, oh, why do we need the number zero? We don't need them. Why does it matter? It's just, okay, count, count how many you got here. Like, who cares? Um, but eventually the number zero was invented because math, math, it's good to have a number that means nothing. So if I, so although it's weird to be like, oh, count how many cubes we have on this table, zero, like, okay, you're not counting technically, you're just stating the obvious. Um, cause you know, counting is usually one, two, three, like, you know, you're just stating that there's zero here, but that's a thing. Now, another thing is, uh, what happens if we have negative of something? Isn't it like, like, because earlier we had three and then we added negative one to get two. Why would, why, again, why would we need that? Why would we need that? We have, we have two here. Just say two, just say two. But again, math, because the more features you add to something like math like that, the more you're able to understand things and the more you're able to uh, create all these formulas and et cetera, et cetera. So again, although it's weird to say, oh, I have negative four apples. That's not, that. what the fuck are you on about? Uh, go. Um, however, negative numbers are important. They are a thing. This continues on a lot. Like you have, you have, zero you have negative numbers you have decimals because like why would you say you have 1.8 apples what is that what's a square root what is that shit what is that like it just keeps going it's like why but like the reality is is that everyone here is probably like uh who cares it's it's like uh it's it's an important thing for math it's good it's good we have decimal points because it's a number between a number, that's good. It's good we have negatives because it's like a opposite of the positive. There's reasons for them. You probably haven't even like really questioned like, oh, why do we need these numbers at this point in your life? If you were like five and you're being taught these numbers and you're like, why do we need to know these? I get that, I get that. But the the, the thing is, is that at this point you're probably like, yeah, they're important. Um, and I'm saying all this because imaginary numbers is that to, yeah, exactly. As a five-year-old, this is very confusing. <laughs> imaginary numbers is that to another level. Because uh, imaginary numbers is basically negative numbers to, that's, that's how I would describe it. Um, if, ne because like, Again, imagine, imagine having negative five apples. Why? What does that mean? That's not a real world thing. Why do we need it? Well, negative numbers are incredibly helpful and they are super helpful. So with that in mind, why can't we go further? And the reality is, is that 
some there's weird shit that happens when you try to square root negative one uh that implies that it goes in multiple directions in a way that no other numbers do because it's 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 a long story there's something about square roots where like because of the way that like like square roots are one of those things where it's like if you put square root of x and then you ask oh what is x equal it can actually mean multiple things because like oh you take um it, like god i'm trying to remember off the top of my head this was like from years ago at this point that i got taught this so i'm like i'm struggling a little bit um because let me think here uh because the square root of nine is three because three times three is nine like oh my god how am i thinking No, I'm like, okay, it's something about, like, because, okay. Because, oh, 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 I think I'm remembering now. Okay, sorry. Because if you take, yeah, exactly, because negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. So, square root, so, um, yeah, exactly. Square root of 9 is either plus or minus 3. It actually has two different answers, or, well, Whatever you 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 you're you're probably getting the idea at this point that square roots can have two different solutions when you're getting into algebra stuff, and the confusing thing is that when you get negative numbers into the mix, it starts to do things where it's like, uh, what? Like you get into a world where it's like it feels like the numbers we're dealing with do not make sense, and then once you start to, um. So, so, like, a lot of the time it's just like, oh, it's not a number. Who cares? It's it's like dividing by zero. Who cares? Um, however, if you try to care and you're like, okay, let's start to think of this like it's a different number system. You have negative i and positive i. Or, well, okay. Or, um, I guess I should say i infinity or negative i infinity. Whatever. Uh, yeah. So, this is um, the imaginary number, uh, imaginary numbers. Um, which, this, this would be 0i. Or, er, yeah, I, I, I wrote this backwards, hold on. <laughs> Negative infinity i, positive infinity i. Oh, shit. Positive. Positive infinity i. And then this would be 0i, which is just 0. Um, uh. um, all right. So, now you have these numbers. And it, essentially, the way it's like is that it's like... How do I describe it? It's like, um, it's, it's negative numbers, but perpendicular. That's really the best way to describe it. What you're looking at is just like, I, I can't imagine it any other way. Um, yeah. And it should also be mentioned that multiplying numbers by I does some weird shit. Um, it's like, oh my God, this is, this is the real nerd shit here. Uh, multiplying by I. Okay. Yes, 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 uh, yes. This fucking image. This shit gets me so excited. I, I know I the curve is like, I hated that. This shit gets me excited. So, okay, hold on. One thing I should mention off the bat. So, when you have a number that's like this, th those are just like normal numbers, okay? You have one, you have two, you have 23 and a half, you have stuff like that. Those are real numbers. Then you have imaginary numbers, which is like I2 or I, which it should be mentioned I is just like a unit that's, it's it's like one. So uh, one I, that's that's like the uh, in, uh, imaginary equivalent of one. So like if one was here, then 
this would be i. And then this would be 2i. Uh, it's written like how variables are, where 2x is x multiplied by 2. It's like that. Um, and yes, uh, and so like similarly, this is negative i, this is negative 2i, whereas this is negative 1, this is negative 2. You, 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 get, you get the point. Um, and you'll notice it's like it's going in four different directions at this point, as opposed to two in real numbers. Nothing is stopping you from plotting this point as a value. Uh, it just gets weird because what ends up happening is that when, so let's see here, we did three and uh, like, this is like the halfway mark between here. So let's say this is one, two, three, I, and then, so this is like 2.5 I, let's say. You didn't, you didn't expect a math lesson, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> um, so that's 2.5i. And then this is 3. Just 3. It's real numbers. Cool. Um, so then this value right here is... Uh, let, let's pick a different color just because I don't want to swap between the two. 2.5... or uh, 3 plus 2.5i... This is actually how it's written. It's written with a plus. Insane, I know. But this green number you're looking at, this is a combination of imaginary values and real values. It is in its own little world. It's difficult to explain because, again, it's just like a, a, a completely different number system combined with a completely different number system. This is complex numbers. This plane you're looking at, this is the complex plane. <coughs> okay? Now, one thing you'll notice is if you... So, okay, let's, let's start with this. If you took 3 and you multiplied it by 1, you don't move it. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It's just, oh, look, it's 3. You went from here to here. <sighs> Holy fucking shit, that's so insane. If you multiply it by negative 1, on the other hand, then you get negative 3. Now, if you look at it from the complex plane, multiplying by negative, uh, negative 1 actually is a 180 degree rotation. Okay? With that in mind... It also would make sense that 3i times negative 1 is negative 3i. That makes sense. It's, it's like, again, it's like if I said uh, negative 3x times negative 1, that would be uh, the, the negative 3x. Did I say negative 3x first? I think I accidentally did. Whatever, you get the you get what I'm saying. I'm just whatever. Um and you know that makes sense. But again, this is a 180 degree rotation. With that in mind, this fucker, this piece of shit, this piece of shit, this is actually just if if you wanted to take this and multiply it by negative one you actually just do a 180 degree rotation again. So, God. Um, so, this becomes negative 3. Well, let's pick a different one. Negative 3 minus 2.5i, which is the, which is just 2.5, negative 2.5i combined with negative 3. So that means uh, if this is negative 2, Negative 2.5, negative 2.53. There we go. We find it. Again, 180 degrees. It's it's like they took numbers and made them visual. Here's here's when it gets here's when it gets crazy. Okay, cause here's here's when it gets interesting. Cause with that weird. Reminder that imaginary numbers are here, and real numbers are here. 
with that in mind, when you use negative square root of negative one, which is I, I should mention that uh, the imaginary unit is defined as negative one, uh, the square root of negative one. You're taking like a real number and you're rotating it into the inverted, uh, the, sorry, the imaginary plane. Um, and as such, I multiplying by I means a 90 degree rotation, because if you multiply something by I twice, it actually, it just does the same thing as multiplying by negative one. And so <laughs> yeah, because uh, I, I times I is, yeah, by definition, because <coughs> since I is the square root of negative one, hold on, square root of negative one. And the square root is the opposite of like exponents or whatever. So opposite of this, whatever <laughs> you, you get the idea, I think, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing myself a little bit here now, but point is because of the way that I is, um, you take three and you multiply it by I and it becomes three I, which makes sense. And then considering that that is a negative, uh, anti-clockwise 90 degrees, three I times I becomes negative three, negative three becomes negative three I Negative three I becomes three. Hi, Elliot. So if you wanted to take this and multiply it by I, how would you do it? Is that you would figure out what the hell this is, which, you know, not, not looking into that right now. So anyways, point is, point is lots of shit, so many numbers. So many numbers, so many numbers. I'm so normal about this. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, if you take the word imaginary literally, it's it's interesting that, like, imaginary, imaginary number. I'm I'm like I'm like losing steam a little bit. If you can't tell. Um, God. Okay. Okay. Let, let's, let's just, let's just, I'll, I'll just drop a lore thing here. Okay. Um, curve alluded to this. Okay. Real world versus dream world is one way you could think of it. Uh, it's real world versus fake world, real world versus imaginary world. This all of this you're looking at, this is an overly, like, abstract version of all of this idea. All this. It's, 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 we're looking at it like this. Now let's look at it in, in, in the other way. Oh no, the arrival. Oh no. I'm gonna get killed now. Hi. Hello. Let's look at it like this now. Okay? Because we just looked at it in its abstract way. Let's look at it in its actual way. Like it's its more specific way, okay? Let's remove all this. Um, let me actually, hold on, let me see if I can find this. Um, there, this was teased in something. Or actually, I think I have them as video files. Let me see, hold on. 
Uh, oh, fuck, which one was that? Oh, it was Teak. Wait, no, it's not going to be in the Teak folder, though. It's going to be in the Plane folder. Um, canvas. MD edit. No, that's that's plain. Where is minor T's? What? Oh. I love my setup here. Dude, shout out to how shitty shortcuts work on Windows. Can I just say that? Um, is it in this one? Where the hell is E7? What the hell? E7. Kaden, Kaden. What? Guys, the third axis is ST lore. That's where all the ST characters live. ST! Oh, ST. my fucking voice. You suck. Yeah. I'm like trying to find. Okay, this is pissing me off now. Uh. Art? Bonus content? No. Canvas? Slosser Reaper. What does that mean? Oh, it's the... Never mind. Physical? I have no idea where I put it at this point. Okay, whatever, whatever. I'm just going to show it on YouTube. I'm going to have to play it over and over. It's fine. Um, where is uh, that? Okay, so I mentioned this earlier. This is a teaser for... Um, okay, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a double teaser, okay? Um, so this is called S0C0E7.5, which if you don't know what this is, uh, or like this text, this text is uh, a repetitive thing on the channel for, Tom for Tomoro projects specifically, which are the important one. Why did it? What the hell? I don't know what I just did. Um, like you'll notice if you go to any of the Tomoro uh, uh, actual, like, albums or songs or whatever. Uh, this is, this is Teak. If you look at the description... I forgot I did... I, if you look at the description on Bandcamp, if you look at the description on Bandcamp, you'll see at the top it says Toma dash and then S0C whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, this, this, re this is referring to, like, the placement in the lore, basically. Uh, S is season, C is chapter, E is episode. Um, uh, S0C0 was referring to the first era. S0C1 is the current era. And E is, like, which project it is in that era. Um, so, from this, you can tell... This was the second project in this era that's currently happening right now. Um, meanwhile, if I go all the way over here... Wait, no, I shouldn't do that one. If we go here... S0C1 E1. So this is the first episode in this one. Um, and then, so, 1, E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6. That, that's that's where we at so far. Um, and then if you scroll down into this section, this is the old era. Uh, S0, C0, E1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. <clears throat> and then if you're curious, these ones are just the single versions. This is the single for this. This is the single for this. This is the single for this. Just... But, <laughs> Okay. Yes, my favorite album, Color Calibration, was the signal ASCII art. Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, I didn't... Yeah, whoops. Whatever. I didn't notice. <coughs> Color Calibration is episode five. Yeah. Because uh, Spider is its own thing as well. Um, 
So. Oh god. <laughs> the thing. <sighs> okay. Where was I going with this? Um. Oh, yes. Okay, so this right here. S0 E sorry, S0 C0 E7. That is the ID for Colorful Shatters, which was the last project of this first era here. Uh, this album essentially was a complete disassembly of the era up to this point, and it also includes some stuff that I knew that I wanted to touch on later on. Uh, for example, uh, terrible mixing choices. scary so yeah uh, as you guys mentioned if we go here to the second episode uh teak was the song i started much before i released it um and one thing about its creation was that I accidentally fucked up the mixing completely at one point. And it was really upsetting because Teak was a song that I was incredibly proud of. And then I fucked it up and I couldn't figure out what was happening. Eventually I figured out like generally what had happened, uh, but I could never get it back to the proper mixing it was at one point, which sucks. Uh, but uh, anyways, so Teak was a work in progress at the time. And so as part of this album, I... Uh, included Terrible Mixing Choices, which is a noise track where I took the early version of Teak, and I fucked it up intentionally even more uh, as a, um, like, a therapeutic process kind of thing. Um, things like that happen all over this album. Uh, Theta is a sequel to Color Calibration. Um, let me see what else. Uh, I think... Sun sunlight beats into my skull samples woohoo um yeah isn't there a bunch of teak summer 22 there there's a lot of teak summer 22 i'm pretty sure yeah i know you referenced it i know you referenced color calibration and uh moonlight oh yeah well we'll get to that yeah um The, the, there, there's a lot of references. Uh, the, the, when I released this, there were a lot of stuff that at the time I knew that I was going to revisit at some point, uh, which in the case of Teak, I knew that I wanted to complete that song at some point. Um, and uh, there was also just straight up callbacks, like the ending things like Theta is the sequel to Color Calibration and it is the most normal thing before the album begins and it descends into this noise territory stuff um etc etc um however likewise there were things color uh, calling back to colorful shatters by far the biggest example of this being the entirety and i'm not even kidding the entirety of plane uh s yes i think that's correct yeah um I mean, I know the intro of 100%. Yeah, well, okay, so one thing that should be mentioned, this is this is a weird thing to mention. Uh, for various reasons, uh, technically the last point, canonically, is actually... Because um, one thing about the first era is that it's actually very out of order a little bit. Um, like, you're, you're kind of jumping around for the most part. Uh, generally, Sick Beats is the start and Colorful Shatters is the end, which is why they go hand-in-hand in, hand in weird ways, despite this one being a shitpost. Because um, this one is also kind of a shitpost, but, like, a serious shitpost. It's whatever. Uh, I, I, ju I just the made it, I made it and didn't care about if it sounded good and I just put it out. Um, Depression-fueled shitposts. 
Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, um, what was I getting at here? Um, oh, yes. Uh, technically, the last song in the c- canon is actually Symmetry of All Things. Like, I wrote an entire, like, idea of a track list for, like, what would be the first song and what would be the last song. And Symmetry was the actual last one. Uh, however, it should be mentioned that Symmet- uh, this this entire album kind of gets scattered all over the place. And everything before Symmetry was the entirety of this album. Uh, so, it... it in a weird way, Symmetry is kind of the bonus track of the era. That's that's the way I would describe it. Um, but so it's I, I'm mentioning this because Plane actually works backwards because the first track is a revisit of Symmetry. And then as it, from this point on, as you go down the album, it reverses back from where the last era ended. It's going 180. Okay, so... Because, okay, so if you go here, Nan is the closer for this album. Wait, why did it play there? Oh, I'm up. Okay. This is a revisit of Nan. This is a revisit of, um... Which track was it? Uh, uh... Shit. Um, the, the banger. Oh, there it is. If, uh, if September is this bad, I fear it's December. Specifically, listen for the clicking sound in the background. There, there's like a chime up. Dong, dong, dong. Sorry. And that actually carried over a little bit. The percussion. The, like, ticking clock sound throughout the entire thing. Uh, this is soaking. Very easily. Uh, it's gonna take a while to play. Bandcamp is laggy. I just wanna uh, complain about this for a second. It's, it's just entirely based on that last beat. Um, coming cold. Oh, sorry, I'm going backwards. Uh, back there is. Uh, uh, can I go home? I'm sick. Uh, Anglel. I'm trying to remember what the- Oh, this is terrible mixing choices. This is- This is terrible mixing choices good version. Because it's like intentionally badly mixed. That- that's one thing. Some of these don't actually have straight up samples. It's just like the meaning of them are the same. In fact, I don't even think Back There and Homesick have like shared samples. It's just like the vibe. Because Homesick is mostly a dark piano part in like a very reverberated room. And Back There is- Exactly that to a further degree. Um, 
Moonlight is an interesting one. Uh, Moonlight is actually just referencing sunlight off of Colorful Shatters. Not with the way it sounds at all. It's ma it's mainly just the title. Um, and there is also uh, a lyric in here, which I always forget about, that directly references Colorful Shatters. Um, or uh, this specific track, I mean. Um, uh... Why, why can I not find it? Like, oh, here we go. Feelings merely arbitrary brainwaves beat against my broken skull with the full title of this being When the Sunlight Beats Into My Skull. So, there you go. Um, and again, as we go down plane, we go up colorful shatters. Formless. I'm trying to remember which one this one is. Isn't that Zeta? It might be. Oh, it is Theta. Because, yeah. the, because the little formless thing is the Theta gem. Yeah. I'm trying to remember why exactly it was Theta. Oh, well, I get, okay. No, it makes sense. Because Theta is... The most normal track. Th the element Theta, or Toma, the, the Toma Theta is um, everything. And it's based off of another number concept, funnily enough. Because... Um, uh, theta in math means like a v not not just like a variable that has a specific meaning, but like a number that could be anything and it will still work. Basically, um, it's used in triangles. Like uh, for example, um, how do I how do I think of this? Uh, Angles. No, hold on. Let me think. It, it is used in, like, triangle stuff a lot, but, like, I'm trying to think. Hold on. Like, f uh, for example, like, theta times negative one equals negative theta. Like, it doesn't matter what you plug in as theta, that will always work, basically. So something like that, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, that kind of thing. Uh... And, uh, by the way, Curve, I'm gonna upload all this. <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> but. Oh, okay. Spooky. Yeah, spooky. Um. And then the last one. Why is Theta misspelled, by the way, Kane? What? I mean, it's just because a lot, like, everything is intentionally misspelled to make it look original, which is stupid, admittedly. Um. Uh, two, uh, you and me is different, uh, because that goes out of colorful shatters territory and it gets more into the, like the the beat of uh, the era. And I honestly don't remember what is directly before colorful. Oh wait, no, it's well, I don't think it's color calibration. Is it? No, it is caliber. Oh, oh yeah, because you and me is color calibration. Because the whole idea of you and me is that it swaps between seven and eight. Uh kind of like playing with what colorful shadows uh, color calibration was doing god can okay, you say everything's misspelled but pi and tau isn't yeah but those are like two and three letters to be fair like i the 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 misspellings are done by like uh removing letters so you should make the p or i <laughs> okay whatever pi this is just p um anyways sorry this is so much info dumping. <laughs> I mean, that's the entire point. The point I'm getting at here. Plain is the opposite of Colorful Shatters. Okay? Colorful Shatters is slowly breaking down the era. Plain is building up the new one. And in order to further uh, make sure that that point is driven home, between those two... I released a teaser called S0C0E7 and a half. This S0C0E7, that is colorful sh shatters. Half implies, of course, it's after that. Um, and then uh, this uh, plane is S0C0. Uh, sorry. S0C1E1. 
because it's the first of the new era. And uh, if you look through it, you'll have the numbers referring to which track it is, which P means part. So part 14, that's track 14. Uh, this is actually showing some, but not all of the tracks uh, in like my own little track list for what the uh, the the first era's like canonical like start and end is basically. And it's like splitting around. Uh, it's it's in order here from start to end. It starts with this and it ends. With symmetry, this is symmetry's visual. And it stops like that, but if you loop it... Magic. And that's intentional, because the whole... It's, it's, uh, it's implying that... First of all, it's a reference to plane. Where, where the fuck is plane? Uh, uh, break the cycle. <laughs> Wait, why am I looking here? I'm supposed to look in the releases tab because of the way I'm doing this. Uh, Every single track on plane actually is loopable. They, they cause a click on YouTube, but for the most part, they don't do that if you actually listen to it in, like, an audio player. Yeah, I should I should have... Uh, I was going somewhere with this, and I got distracted. Uh, the, the point of me bringing up this in the first place... Uh, I'm gonna keep talking about this because it's fun to talk about, but... The point I'm getting at with this versus this is that, um... Uh, imaginary plane refers to Tomaro. This refers to the real world. Uh, Tomaro is perpendicular to the real world. Um, and there is actually one little thing. And th this this is... Uh, oh, right. Hold on. I'll, I'll continue with that in a second. I just want to show one visual in here. This is why I brought this up in the first place and I got distracted. Um... So that right there, that one, this is the visual for, so if you if you look at this, this is S0C0E2, that's Teak Summer 22, part 16, track 16 is um, uh, the, the closing track, which is, um, what's it called, uh, uh, um, uh, I, I, dr I, dream, I dreamed a square wave. I dreamt. I dreamt a square wave. It's, it's called dreamed because I forgot the word dreamt exists. But we're just going to ignore that. <laughs> I dreamed a square... Wait, hold on. D-R-E-A-M-E-D. -E -E it's intentional. Guys, it's intentional. <laughs> Shut up. It's intentional. We did it on purpose. Uh, dreamed. I dreamed a square wave. Um, which, first of all, the inclusion of dream is already... Uh, oh, okay. Um, but right here, you can see we have a... Well, you have all these square waves, of course, obviously. But we have a like a room. You can see the door to that room, that and you can see a bed. Wait, that floor texture isn't that the one used in the Ute game? It is. Yes. <laughs> there, there's a lot of reused textures. Uh, this is the Project Blue Room store, Elliot. Yeah, I know. That. Yeah. Um. Well, one of them actually, but. Uh. But yeah. The one inspired by your room. Yeah, but this is this is a room. You have the door. You have the bed in the room. But then you also have this, uh, we're looking at this room sideways, and you have this door parallel to the bed. So what's going on here? The idea is, and this further implies the dream theory thing. Because 
the idea is generally that, uh, hold on, let's, uh, I forget. Wait, oh, oh, I can do that. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it like this. Um, so here we have a door, okay? Door. This is the real world, okay? Whoa. Uh, and then in the real world, you have a bed. Whoa. Okay, you sleep on the bed. You go to sleep. What happens when you sleep? You dream. And become a cube. Now, it just so happens if you rotate a bed, it gets fucking rotated like a door. It looks Whoa. like a door now. So, a bed is a door into the dream world. You see, you see what I did? There? You see? You see? Um, and I, I doorknob that's that big? It's a very weird doorknob, I know, right? Um, and who has a pillow that small? Uh, so, let's just, like... Yeah, okay. Um, anyways. Uh, and I should mention that this is going to be teased at in Cartesian as well. Um, uh, Cartesian horizontals uh, teaser thing. I, I uploaded a short called Render 9. Which this is this is just uh, Cartesian horizontals like sampler. I did it differently this time, and one thing I did as part of it is that I gave it a description that says you will wake up on a bed of flowers. Um, Undertale. A bed of flowers. Uh, however, um, uh, which wake up like a a, a bed, you know, Whoa. bed of flower. Whoa. Um, but the important thing to note is that a bed of flowers, or just a normal bed, is horizontal. Uh, however, the um, when Render 7 comes out, which is the teaser for Cartesian Vertical, uh, the description will be, you will open up a bed of flowers, uh, which is a confusing sentence. However, in the, in the, it implies this idea of a bed being like a door. You're opening up a bed of flowers, like a door. Um, so, there you uh, go. It is also a reference to a lyric on the album, I'll say that. But, there you go. Um, okay, what, what, what uh, well, I was, I was gonna show these as well. I think I already showed this yeah, one, you showed let's do it again. Those. That one might be, that one might be my favorite loop, actually. It's 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 so it's it's such a good transition knowing that um when you listen to the transition in the actual album it's 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 a good transition as an album that that's the thing all the tracks loop but they also flow into each other and that one in particular I was like oh thank god that worked cuz the transition from natural dissonance into back there just like Makes me so happy, but also natural dissonance loops properly, which makes me even more happy. Anyways, getting off. I topic. never even knew that they all loop. You didn't know that? Yeah, you never wow. told me. Yeah, I never told you apparently. But there you go. Back there loops. That one. That one's admittedly a little bit of a weirder loop, I'll say. Uh, there is a worse one on here, I'll say. <laughs> Anglel actually loops well. Oh, yeah. There was a click in there, because YouTube sucks. Uh, this is the one with the bad loop, but that's just because this is the one lyrical song, or the one straight-up lyrical song, and it has, like, a very clear start, middle, end, as opposed to the rest of the album which is very jammy and feels very much like let's repeat an idea and then base the entire song around it. With this one, it really does feel like it has a intro and outro, uh, first verse, second verse, et cetera, et cetera. And so because of which this loop feels weird, but it does, it's a thing technically. Like, it kind of works? Kind of. 
It, it, it feels weird considering, you know, but... I think it's a, it's a seamless loop, it's just, it doesn't fit with the song. Exactly, yeah, it's a seamless loop, it just doesn't feel right as a song, because that, when you hear that last part, you expect it to go into formless, and it also yeah. very much feels like an outro, but then you suddenly have the intro again. So, you know, you could loop Moonlight if you wanted, it works in the way that the rest of the album kind of does, but also Moonlight is the lyrical one, so like, why would you do that? Uh, that being said, Formless loops really well, if I remember correctly. Yep. The bass comes back, yeah. And then, finally, we have the bonus snippet, which is in its own little world. It is not loopable. It goes to a complete halt. Because that's 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 there to act as the actual outro for this album specifically. However, you and me is uh, it's it's called a bonus snippet here because the first track of the sequel for uh, Plane will be titled "You and Me," and it will be a full version of the little pattern you get in here. And so, once that album is out, you will be able to actually transition from playing into the sequel because instead of playing you and me bonus snippet you play the full song and you start the album like that and then that happens again with the album three and then who knows what's happened there uh you can probably guess what would happen for the end of album three considering all of the um uh you know repetitive nature wink wink at the end uh, of album three you get ascended a tomorrow <laughs> you you get rotated. The al the the album re rotates you. Arr! Um, but yeah. So uh, 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 more reasons to like Plane because uh, yeah yeah you know Plane, I'm very happy with how Plane ha turned out as you can tell. Um, God, what 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 else should I, should I just like quickly give an idea of what all these visuals are? Yes. I might as well because it's only a, a minute and eleven seconds so. Um, also, I should mention, uh, this is Good Morning. Uh, Good Morning, I think, is considered the start. Wait, hold on. Oh, did I mix up something? I think I mixed up something. Does this... Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm remembering now, I think. So... I think the, uh, so I said earlier that the last song was Symmetry. That's actually wrong. The s first song canonically is Symmetry, but the last song canonically is Good Morning. Uh, and uh, you'll actually notice that I kind of alluded to this a little bit because the way that I wrote bonus track here is with the square brackets, which is what I normally don't do. I normally do it with circle brackets like this. Um, if you look at pretty much all my albums, it's like that. However, if you look at Teak Summer 22, for some reason, at that point, I wrote it with square brackets. And uh, so, as of right now, pretty much the only tracks that have bonus track written in square brackets are Good Morning and uh, Symmetry, which is the start and end of this era. So, there you go. And I also... I, does Good Morning samples Symmetry? I don't remember. Oh, I think... It, is that why it's... Uh, oh, wait. Wait, what is that? Oh, that's music one. Yeah, that, that's the youth. Same album, but it is different. That's youth. But anyways, good morning. P fourteen, track fourteen. Ta da! Oh, I should also. <laughs> I should mention the text spinning in the sky. Um, yeah. Okay. This is a funny reference. I don't know if anyone would have gotten this, but it's it's I, I'm kind of proud of it, honestly. Um, okay, if we go to the beginning of option one. Should I scroll? I'm not going to scroll. Uh, here it is. Look at the start of this. This section of video intentionally left blank. Uh, we have this text here. Okay. And it's become like a running joke that all the DJ Squarex albums start with a text like this, like, oh, guys, I know it's a black, it's a black video. Don't click away, please, please. It's important. Um, 
all of them start like this, but this section of the video intentionally left blank. Uh, the text here, I, it's kind of hard to tell because it's flipped, but it says this world intentionally left blank. And I don't remember what this says. Uh, it's just like the word blank over and over or something. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah, okay, because at the end of this, it brings back the section of the video text in this little bit of visuals in the extra. This shitty-ass visuals. And it says, again. So, it's, it's again. So, it's implying that the world has restarted over and over and over and over again to the point where you don't know how many times it started over because the again has gone off the screen completely. So, yeah, because the the whole idea is that uh, the 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 first era kind of loops since Good Morning is a kind of callback to Symmetry a little bit. So you could feasibly loop it, and the whole idea of this is that. Uh, it, it gives you this prompt, are you ready to continue? This action cannot be undone. Uh, if you say, no, let's stay a while, it brings you back to the first era, and it gives you the playlist in order. Generally. I think this is in order properly, actually. Yeah. So, oh, oh, god, fucking... Symmetry is last, good morning is start. That makes sense, because it's fucking called good morning. I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's your <laughs> the, own... The, in, in fairness, Symmetry and Good Morning are like the same song canonically. It's just they sound completely different. It's whatever. You get the point. Because um, the idea is, oh, the last the last project has the first song. and the, One of the first projects has the last song. Uh, whatever. <laughs> um, are all of the eras going to be this? No. Shuffled? No. Um, <laughs> in fact, I'll get to that in a second. But anyways, so yeah, the, uh, this starts with the section of the video intentionally left blank. Later it gets the again, implying that the word again gets added every single time it repeats. Meanwhile, the, uh, did I close it? I'm an idiot, I closed it. Meanwhile, this says again, 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 and it says this world intentionally left blank. Uh, by the way, this visual, this area, this is actually the colorful shatters, um, album yeah, cover i'm pretty sure or actually no it's not that it's, it's the, the um it's, 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 it's the profile pillars. picture yeah, it's this it's, it's, it's the wait is it yeah those are made up pillars yeah i mean it's edited in this one but there's a um this is based on a blender file and it has like pillars it's so pillars you're actually it's so pillars um so uh this is a this is a fucked up cube um, the camera is actually placed where the cube is, and it's looking up, and you have the text there spinning around, and it's all reflective. Um, but yeah, let's stay a while, it's the era. Yes, let me go, it goes into plane. I forgot to mention that. I just mentioned that. Anyways. Uh, then you have... Which one is this? The stars are breathing outside. I forgot how fucking crazy that is. Okay. I haven't looked at this in so long. I should mention that. Uh, what is the background? What? What is going on in the background? This? Yeah. That. that is, are, are you... Is this is the things? This is DJ Squirt's land. You knew that, right? I can't tell. You, look at the reflection. He has the glasses. Well, yeah, I, I see him. <laughs> but I'm talking about what's in the, the back. No, it's it's just the things. You know, it's just the things. What is DJ Squares' world like? It's 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 mega so jackpot. it's so world. I got the mega jackpot. Yeah. I, uh, I DJ Squares. This is this is DJ Squares talking. Wow. Is not that insane? He's talking normally. I wonder if that has some kind of relevance. Bay door. There's Wait, no, which one is this? No, 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 this is wrong. You, you bad at door. <laughs> there's no dot. There's no dot. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me let me find Mega a reference because again, Teak Summer 22 is just thrown all over the place. Um, 
Eight. Which it's a it's a compilation, so that's to be expected. Otherworldly is this one. I love this song. This song is so good. It doesn't go on for like forever for no reason. Uh otherworldly. And it's a main door. You have the water, which is going back and forth weirdly. This one this one should be obvious. I wonder what that is. I wonder what that was. I wonder what that was. Why is there no fucking link? God, me and my old projects are like, oh, where are the links? I don't have Voronoi's database. Did you guys know that? What? I don't have Voronoi's written in my fucking Google Sheets thing. How? Because it, it, it was just old enough that I just didn't put it in the- I think it was the last one that I made in the old one, and for some reason I never carried it over. And so I have to do that at some point, and it pisses me off. Um... Jesus, where is it? Okay, here it is. Sorry. I just wanted It's the same thing. Whoa. Whoa. This one doesn't light up, but it's- it's- it's implied in the visuals that it's supposed to light up when it hits. This is Ute. Yeah, that's the Ute land, but it's it's it's, 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 it's the entire land. Ute uh, world map, but as 3D. I don't like 3D Ute map. Yeah, me either. Do you, do you like the um the the cool the cool world? The, these on the ground, those are these oh, are the these cars? are race car spawners. Yeah, those are the, the where the cars <laughs> are. There, there's this very cool room where the rooms next to it have arrows pointing to it, and when you go in it, there's like a shit ton of race cars that blow up. And it lags out the game. Is you the character canon? I don't... No, it's probably not, no. I, th I think it's canon in the way that, like, Blue. you would go to an arcade and you would find you thought... No, you wouldn't do that. Ute is a game that exists Sm in the does, canon. The smile... Uh, but but the smile is not canon, you know what I mean? Smile is not canon, but you... No, 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 no. Okay, <sighs> it's confusing, because here's the thing. The whole idea of ute.swf is that it's supposed to be like a shitty creepypasta type of thing, so it, where the creator is like a toddler, that's why it's all spelled bad and stuff, but then the toddler died in a house fire, and, <laughs> and fucking... And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then possessed the game somehow when it got leaked out into the world like a virus. Something like that. I, I don't fucking remember, but <laughs> so, it, so, so it's, it's confusing. Enough. It's confusing. Because Smile is not... It's... So Smile confusing. is just some kid who's dead. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> they're an indie dev I don't know. It's weird. Uh oh, another Ute reference actually. Uh, this is oh yeah, that's Rorschach. Yeah, Rorschach. Um, the uh the game had like these bits where you're supposed to fill out questions, and one of them was the Rorschach test, where it's like, here's a weird image. You have to guess what it is. Blue elephant. And then yeah. By the way, I like I like I I know I made this, but I'm just gonna float my own boat for a second here. Uh. I, I like I like the weird like randomized like scaling here with the text. Yeah, why do some things get scaled? That's that's a, that's intentional. I like used some like noise things so that it picked randomly for the different things, and it looks whack. Um, but yeah, this is Rorschach P three. Cool. And I should mention, all these visuals are on Spotify as, um, canvases for the tracks. So if you go to Rorschach on Spotify mobile, you will see that visual it playing also, on loop. It's, it's also on desktop now, actually, which is cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, and I will also point out, all the so all the tracks that are playing right here, uh, what was this one? This is P9, so that's Music 2. All of these are tracks that will be 
in um that will be referenced in over and over uh it, it started with good morning it's going through the entire era it's skipping over a lot of the tracks but you'll notice at the end there's going to be some uh some familiar faces they don't have faces what is this one six uh th that's the you oh the end yeah because it, it's scary but you look closely what Hold on you gotta look closely. you have to fnaf the right to the you, you can't tell on YouTube because YouTube sucks ass. There's tiny little smiley faces that come closer and then go into the darkness again. Yeah, uh, brighten the video. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I can't. Yeah, I can't either. Um, but um, but that, th that smiley face image is actually the image that shows up as the last screen in utes.swf. Uh, and, and it's, like, accompanied with, like, instead of instructions for the next game, it just has, like, a, uh, like, text from a news report saying, like, uh, the, the kid died in a house fire or whatever. And that, that, that's the reveal. That's the sick reveal. Um, that's really fucking awesome. Stupid idiot clips through the spider web. It's the buddy! Also, I love that it says in the corner, ignore that this is obviously an octopus lol. Um, this is Spider. That's really? that's the song, Spider. Can you believe it? Can you tell? It's it's not obvious at all from anything. Also, I think I recorded the, the like I listened to the audio alongside and tried to move his movements to the music. I was not good at it, but oh, that was Snake. Wow. Which which there was a. Uh... Three, three, three. Wait, how many times did it do it? Yeah, it did it uh, three times for three, three, one, one, and then it did two, 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 which is a reference to the beat of Snake, actually. One two three one two three one 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 one. How am I gonna do this? One two three one two three one 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 two three one two three one 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 two three one two three one 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 two one two one two one two one two three one two three one two. It's it's the same beat from um, a Dofi uh 3x whatever that's called. I'm the wind up. That's what's called. It's the same beat from the wind up basically. The shapes, the shapes, they're telling you. You got this. This is a uh, origin point. I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. This is parallax. It's like the uh, door. I forgot how fire this looks. What the hell? Did I actually make an arm? I don't remember doing that at all. The fuck? Hold on, go back. Where's Parallax? Nope. Parallax has this tunnel thing, and then this is like looking... This is like in the tunnel looking out. You can see that's the same, like, snowy... Well, okay, you can't see in this. Hold on. Color Calibration has a newer version of that cover art. Hold on. No, what am I doing? I'm looking in the wrong era, color calibration. Still talking somehow, I don't know how I'm doing this. Oh, this. It's, it's slowly loading. Cyan. This, if you compare this to this, it's the same thing. It's just looking the opposite direction. This is looking into the tunnel. This is looking out of the tunnel. Wow! And you get to see all the crazy ass reflections. Uh, this is. Oh shit. It's, um, Gravestone. 
I believe. Yeah. P15. Am I right about that? Come on. Gravestone, yeah. Because uh, the, the um, Gravestone is a track from Accompany the Game, and there was an idea for Accompany where... I don't remember, um, there, there, there's this idea for Accompany that the first area, well, okay, I guess just, Accompany is a 3D first person game. I, I'll, I'll show gameplay for it while I'm doing this. Um, for the prototype version of the game, I mean. Are you uh, ever going to finish it? I have no idea. No promises. It's just, there we go. Okay, so. This is this is a cool game. It's a game. Um, so uh, here I'll keep the music on, but quiet. Actually, so this music in the background is the track titled a "Accompany." By the way, it's just slowed down at the moment, and you'll notice. Well, you'll notice that what, that just happened. Listen. It gets faster as you go down. Because the idea... Um, so Accompany is this game where... It's it's somewhat inspired by The Witness. Uh, when it comes to world... The world. Like, I, I want to... Uh, if I ever make this game, I want it to be kind of like The Witness, but... Like... 140 at the same time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like... Uh, uh, the um is there any DJ the, the different there? areas have mechanics related to the music uh the mechanics are typically based on weird music theory stuff uh for example i had an idea where I, I i don't know if this would make it into the final game actually but one of the first ideas i had for it that i made and i don't have the prototype for it anymore somehow um is that uh, the, uh a song would play here i'll just Play the song actually. That's it. You get some secrets. You get some secrets. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's see here. I don't actually know where to find it. Oh, oh, zero E. Okay, something, anything. This one. Can you hear that? If you can't tell yet, this song is in 9-8. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. You get the point. Um, quarter note, dotted quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. Uh, every measure. Uh, for the most part. For the most part. Um, and basically, this song is set up in a way where it's very, like, it's... It's very clearly playing into that feeling that that dotted quarter note feels like the tempo is almost slowing down. It feels like it's dragging a little bit. It feels like it's slowing down. And the idea was, uh, th this was the song that played in the prototype for the game, the very first, like, prototype. I had a little test world, and you would run around in it and jump around. And uh, as you jumped around and stuff, you had the music playing. But every time that that uh, that group of three would play, um, the game speed would slow down. Uh, so you would be running around, you would be jumping around as normal. But every time that one, two, three happens, the speed of the game slows down a bit, and you had to 
get used to the feeling of 9-8 in order to actually progress through the game properly. Do 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 It does that the entire time. And then I say the entire time, but that's not entirely true, because there is also I don't know if it's in this file, but Oh wait, oh So there, it's splitting the three into two and one, so it becomes two, two, one, two, two. So, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two. It, it feels like it's speeding up at that point. It feels like four, four, but you're throwing an extra eight in the middle, and it, or eighths in the middle, and it feels like it's going very quick all of a sudden. And that was also a very fun thing to mess with, was the feeling of uh, you have to get used to when that eighth will happen because your game speed will cause you to basically fall off and you'll have to get used to the feeling of when that is going to happen and you try to like not move when that happens you walk away anyways point i'm getting at here point i'm getting at here uh uh Akampani is based on ideas like this and one idea was that the first area would be Basically, a a massive, um, a massive. Uh, hold on a second. Oh, the the first area would be um. What? I don't know why it's doing that. A massive area that uh, that building. This is the word I'm looking for. A massive building that you start at the top, and it looks like a metronome. And then you make your way to the bottom. There isn't an, an underground bit, but it's like optional and it's like a challenge area kind of thing. Uh, but once you get to the ground level, you're able to leave and you're able to go out into this open world with all these different areas with their own little mechanics all based on different things. And the metronome, which is the first area that you're forced to do, is uh, based around tempo. So you start at the top and it's at its slowest, but as you go down, it gets faster and faster. Uh, wrong thing. Right? But then you listen to it at the start here. Much slower. <coughs> and you keep going down and it gets faster and faster. Getting all the cubes. Is there any sightings of DJ Squirts in this uh, video? These cubes can become. Do you have like some synced stuff here? Yeah. What? Is there any uh, DJ Squirts found in this video? I don't know, actually. There, there was an Easter egg in this game uh, where there was like a 1 out of 100% chance that a pink cube would become a DJ Squirts. So if you see a DJ Squirks bouncing around, that would be why. He's infected the game. But yeah, so as you can see, you fall down and it gets much quicker. Um, they're just there because funny. They uh, also help show you what time you're at. Yeah, exactly. Because the cubes also follow the um, the time shift. <coughs> it's not super clear in this one because the tempo is shifting gradually. But I'm pretty sure I did get it to work, kind of. Oh, and as you can hear, it got way slower as it went up. So yeah, this was an idea, uh, and obviously this is a very small prototype, it looks like ass, obviously. Uh, however, I did have an idea for like how the game would start if it had like a story. 
and I was like, okay, um, what would be an interesting way to start the game? And my idea was, what if, since you're at the top of the metronome, and you're at the slowest point, what if you were stuck? You were stuck in a room that had a almost completely closed door, but it's open. And then so you go up to it and you try to open it. However, time is completely stopped. And the issue is that if time is completely stopped, it doesn't matter how heavy that door is. It doesn't matter how open it is. You can't open it because it's just stuck there. You can't, it's stuck in time. You can't open it. Suddenly, this this suddenly feels like it's important somehow. So, Gravestone was a uh, idea for a track, ambient track that would play um, in the background of this first area, basically. Hold on. I shouldn't have jumped forward. Oh, there we go. First ambient or dark like sounding track I've ever made, which is cool. You know, banger. Um. Uh. Uh. And yeah, that's what this is based on. Wow, amazing. Um, and then the idea would be that you would find some button or something that turns on the metronome and like there, there might be like a window and you like can see outside and you can see the little thing go by or something, but it, it's just slow enough that you're actually able to open the door and progress down and etc. cetera. Uh, uh, also, I should mention this. Uh, it's called Gravestone, but you might have noticed that it's called Grave stone and there's a reason for that uh it's actually a bit of a reference it's actually a bit of a reference to grave grave being the word for slow uh used to define tempo because there's different words that mean different tempos you have allegro which means like really fast or whatever grave is the slowest tempo by those words and so the idea is a gravestone is a really slow stone so there you go. Grave stone is actually how you're supposed to say it. I just wrote it with the normal letters for some reason. I don't remember why. It's supposed to have like an accent mark, but I did it like this instead for whatever reason. Okay. I like dropping all this more because I finally am able to actually explain all this. Can you imagine that? Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm glad I looked at the, I forgot there's literally just this here. This is a fire visual actually. That, that was just straight up at company, I think. Yes, yeah, it's, it's literally like the first room. You have you the first room. Anything. You have the thing spinning. It's all dark because it's like neglected. Uh, yeah, that's literally at company. Or actually, yeah, yeah. Um, this is I Dreamed a Square Wave, as we talked about before. This is, as I actually mentioned before as well, my background that I showed, funnily enough. Um, it's, without except, the text box, though. Yeah, without the text box, and it's n without a person. It's made in Blender. Wait, there's. I, I forget that there's a. The water actually moves. What? I forget that there's a person on the. Uh, on the one that you have. Oh, wait, no, there isn't. Not oh. on this one. I think there was a person at one point, and then I removed them for some reason. Not sure why, actually. Um, murder. You're the yeah, that's why. Um, but yeah, so we have this, and this is Woohoo, which the whole idea of Woohoo, uh, it, it was a song I just made. It wasn't for any purpose. Um, cause basically, like, the, the first couple tracks here were all made for Ute. Uh, the first five, I mean. This was a interlude, it was like the boot up sequence. First level. First test. Second level, second test plus the uh, death um, sound at the end. Uh, fucked up boot version, but like, uh, like for the end game, like cutscene thing. And then you have like a little ambient thing that was also made for the end game. Uh, and then from that point on, there's some tracks that I created to include in Ute, but I didn't. What is one of them? Otherworldly was just me, like, fooling around 
beatbox because I liked making music in beatbox. Uh, and Otherworldly was like the last song I made for a while before I was like, okay, you know what? I kind of stuck at making music. I'm done. And then a while later, I came back to it and I made music too. Just a little remix of music one, a little variation in production. Uh, That's also Ute. Yes, it's it's Ute again. Um, uh, and I was making some music again, but then I was again like, eh, I'm not that great at this, whatever. I'll do f- focus on like game making stuff. And then after a while, I came back to it again, this time with more of a understanding of making music and stuff because of the pandemic. The pandemic happened. It happened at a weird point in my life. It was a junior year of high school, uh, which at that point I had already decided what I was doing in high school. So that sucks. But um, but I, I got some chances to, you know, l- look into some stuff and I found out like, oh, bass is important. Chords are important. Maybe part of the reason I didn't like the songs before was that I just kind of threw melodies on top of each other without thinking about it. And then I made Woohoo. You have some chords. You got bass. This, this feels a lot more like a song. Ignore the shitty percussion. Fuck jump box drums. Ignore that. You know? But then you have this section. And I was actually happy with these arpeggios and stuff. And and so like this 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 to me felt like the first song where I felt like I truly broke through and was like, oh, I can make shit. Uh, even though it's not that great of a song. Like, this is the first point where I was like, yeah, I could show this to people and be like, this is a song I made and not feel like complete shit about it. <coughs> I, I agree with that, yeah. Blooping said I love how I found jump box drums to be best used for experimental noise shit, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so Woohoo would just kind of felt like a, uh, a sunrise for me, basically. So, uh, I already had this desktop made, so I was like, you know what? Sure. There we go. Uh, there, there isn't much of a reason for that. It just, you know, and I feel like it does fit the sound of the sunrise. So, you know, if that makes sense. Color calibration. I wonder if you could tell how. What's the color that, calibration one again? What? what? What is that one again? Uh, it's just, you know, the part where everything is falling and there's yellow. Oh, it's literally just that. It's it's just that you see the tr- the weird fucked up trees falling, and then it, it doesn't show in this version, but on the Spotify version, it reverses back to its original point so that it loops instead of just falling and then repeating awkwardly. Uh, then right here you have theta, or wait, no, this is yeah, this is theta actually. Um, it doesn't include color. No, this is color calibration. I'm being stupid. Ignore me. Drem, uh, dr- Drem, Dreamed, Woohoo, which night, day, oh, look at that, it's the night and then it, the sunrise comes up, ooh, I forgot about that, but yeah, um, hold on, uh, and then we have color calibration and we have theta, are, are you asking about this, this is a crystal, um, here, I'll, uh, there's actually, it's this, the, uh, the theta, what is cover- the theta gem? What? What is the theta gem? It's the gem. The gem. Why does it? Why does it explode? Do you like you? evil Cubo? Look at him. Why does? Why does the theta gem make you explode? So, okay. First of all, I should mention I had an idea for a a, 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 a gem in Tomo. Like, there's there's not much. It was just like a little idea I had. That would be cool. Like, imagine. Well, okay. Let me say this. Pitches have resonance that causes things sure let's say that um because the idea is that like a big reason why color is so important and stuff like that is because 
a lot of the colors you see for the different signs of Toma and stuff, a lot of these that you're looking at are uh, associated with a pitch, which I, as I showed earlier, okay? Like this is C, this is C sharp, this is D, D sharp. It goes around like that, okay? Uh, e, F, because E sharp, it doesn't exist, technically. We'll get to that. Uh, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, uh, A, A sharp, uh, B, and then there's no B sharp, and that leaves C. Cool, right? So all those I just listed off have their own pitches. However, you uh, you might have noticed I, I did a lot. Uh, um, okay, so here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, hmm, hmm. Do I have it in the parallax? I'm trying to remember. No, okay, it's normal in parallax. So this this also alludes to it. All the colors match up here. Um, red. Uh, uh, Daw. Well, okay. Let me let me let me read off the white keys real quick. Daw, Ray, May, Faf, Sor, Log, Teeb. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Uh, it's it's the same kind of thing. Um, uh, you you also have door. Uh, you. Uh, hold on. You also have Da and Dol sound both like Do. Ray and Rain both sound like Ray, which literally matches up with Ray, haha. Uh, May and uh, just May uh, matches up with Me, Do, Re, Mi. Faf and Foss match up with Tha. Sor and Sla match up with uh, Sor. I mean, sorry. Uh, so, log and Lee go with la. Teeb is T. <laughs> you, so you, you see how much shit I've packed into this fucking system? So this has been going on for so long. I don't know what it is. It's just like, it just exists. It just keeps on happening. It's just like, I, I have to feel like I have to put these colors in this way. It's like, I, I don't know. So Latin is canon? Huh? So Latin is canon? <laughs> Latin is canon? God. Um, anyways, yeah, so. Do, uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. There you go. Um, and and the, 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 those are the pitches. Those are the pitches. I know. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm, like, a little bit giddy because being able to actually talk about all this is actually insane to me. Like, I'm able to just, like, info dump about all this. Anyways. <clears throat> the point I was going with this, I don't even remember. Oh, yes, I do remember, actually. So here's the thing. There's an idea in Tomoro, where essentially, you know how it was like, oh, uh, that note and that note don't exist. Uh, e, uh, e sharp, B sharp, those both don't exist. Um, or F flat and, uh, F flat and C flat. There we go. Sorry, it took me a moment. F flat and C flat don't exist. First of all, they do technically exist. Uh, they're alternate spellings for for fucking whatever. Uh, but in terms of pitches, they aren't different. However, there is an idea that basically uh, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just say um, there's this idea that pitches used to be 14 tet in the universe. However. Uh, there was something that happened that basically meant that it was incredibly, uh, like, a bad idea um, to do that. Because it ended up being, like, because all these pitches that you're looking at right here, including if there was a note here and a note here, which this note is that note. Um, uh, if you were to include accidentals there, they resonate with 
Toma. They they match with the resonance of Toma, and as such, it causes insane shit to happen because you're basically like able to like it, it, it's 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 like it's kind of like spell casting a little bit. <laughs> kind of, I would say that. Like imagine imagine you play a chord, okay? If I were to if I were to play a chord, bar, Caden? hold on. Whoa, that was a great noise. I don't know if that's coming through, but I'm playing a I'm playing a C major triad. C E G. Oh wait, you know what? Actually, I'm an idiot. Why don't I just do this? Um, let's not do that one. Let's do a piano, please. Oh, it's so off. It's so off. Uh, okay, whatever. The audio delay is messing with me, but okay. C major. That is C, E, and G. Do, Re, Me, Fa, Sol. Do, Re, and, uh, 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 is it, it's not slaw, because slaw is sharp, because it's on the other side. Um, oh yeah, that's another thing. I forgot to mention this. <laughs> uh, so fun fact, uh, you know how earlier I was complaining, oh, plus, 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 those are all plus, and this is negative, negative, uh, uh, or wait, sorry, god, I'm, you know how earlier I was complaining that on the left side of this wheel we have plus, we have plus here, we have plus here, we have plus here. Like, th that all follows this. However, over here, this is negative for this side. So this is plus, this is pl uh, sorry. This is plus, this is plus, this is plus, and this is kind of plus. Uh, yeah, you'll notice uh, uh, the same kind of thing is actually happening here, because these are all naturals, but these are all sharps. These are naturals. Oh, wait, sorry. These are sharps, and these are naturals. Natural, sharp, natural, sharp, natural, natural, sharp, natural, sharp, natural, sharp, natural, natural. So, once again, it is another example of this weird half-and-half half thing going on. Um, I don't remember, honestly. Um, I'm guessing it was a coincidence, but it's weird. It's, it's cool. <coughs> half of the shit in here is all coincidences, honestly. That, that's part of the reason why I've been so hooked to, like, looking into all this shit, because it's like, it... it it feels less like I'm making a system, and it feels more like I'm actually discovering shit. Because it's like... It, it's just... There's so much, like, weird intri intricacies that just, like, fit together for no reason. It's weird. Anyways. Right here. C major. That's C-E-G. Okay? C... Uh... Wait. C E. Uh, that's F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Wait, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, okay. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, that's why Hackenbush, like, it hit so hard for me, was I was like, this is like, so, so me, so me. Um, but yeah, so Da is Ray is here, and, uh, um, Thaf is here. Da Me Sor is C major. Point is, okay. If you were to, so you know how, okay. You know how, uh, okay, I'll just assume that people don't know what this is, because I'm going to upload this as well. Um, uh, for those unaware, 
not in key. Doesn't matter. It's it's technically non key, uh, and that's because uh, it, it like it's it's so it's so complicated. I'm not the person to ask about this. But twelve tet is set up in a way. Twelve tet is twelve tone equal temperament. Twelve tone equal temperament is set up in a way where, um, in order to make sure that all of the scales are equal to each other, it intentionally screws up some of the intervals a tiny bit in order to make room so that C major and D major are exactly the same, but they're, they start at different pitches. Because the reality is, is that when you hear people talking about intervals, you'll hear people say, oh, C to C above it, that's a one to two ratio. Okay? And then you'll hear people say a perfect fifth, C to G is a, I want to say, uh, 5 to 3 ratio, or is that something else? Um, I, I mixed them up. I don't remember off the top of my head, but something along those lines. Because uh, you have, like, you can do 1 to 2 ratio, which is an octave. 1 to 3 ratio is something that you could maybe do. You have all the different, uh, what are they called? Um... Oh, uh, the harmonic series, that's what they're called. Those are, like, all the most, the, the most consonant harmonies you can have, okay? And the big reason why the perfect fifth is called the perfect fifth is because it is one of those intervals that is the closest to that. Octaves are the same way. Perfect fourths are the same way. Um... And, uh, technically unisons are the same way, so if I were to, uh, take out another piano here, and I were to play the same exact C along with that, then that would be a unison, uh, which is, like, the most harmonic you could go, because, you know, it's literally the same note, so. I yeah. am the Subway Surfers gameplay, so you can focus. <laughs> God. <coughs> it's really amazing. Well, I really didn't need that. Okay. Um, anyways, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, okay, point is, uh, the issue is, is that it is not possible to have those proper harmonies without ending up with a situation where, uh, like, um, changing, a, changing from C major to D major... Uh, basically, okay. You might have heard people be like, "Oh, what's your what's your favorite key?" Oh, I like how I like D because it makes like D is so pretty. It's so sad sounding, like that kind of thing. At this point, that is very preferential. Uh, there there are like actual things that can decide like, oh, these are like different keys. Uh, like main thing that comes to mind is that. C major is only the white keys, which means that you, it's, like, the easiest to play on piano because you don't, like, it's right there. It's just set up that way. Um, meanwhile, uh, G flat, pentatonic, whatever it is, is the black keys, which is its own kind of pretty because it's a tritone away from C major, but it's also pentatonic, and it's also easy to play because, again, the piano is set up in a way where you can just have it there. Um, and then you also have stuff like D major, which is its own thing. It's some white keys, some black keys, etc., etc. It's swapping between the two. Um, uh, point I'm getting at here. There, there are differences between the keys. It's just, like, when it comes to, uh, the intervals, like, the change between Do and Re, or, uh, uh Do and Mi, or whatever, they're always the same. However, if you try to uh, tune a piano so that all so that C major is set up in a way where all of the intervals are perfect to the absolute degree, you'll have an issue where if you try to play in D major, things will sound different because uh, the difference between the notes are slightly off for weird mathematical reasons. Uh, it is also very difficult to tune it, anyways. So. 
because of which the solution was 12 tet where people took um like it's 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 too complicated to explain properly but basically just shift over the notes just enough so that everything is equal c major d major it's the same it's just they start at different root notes okay with that all being said <laughs> god imagine imagine if we were in a world <laughs> Where, um, we're like trying to, so hold on, I should mention, because 12 tet, 12 tone equal temperament. Um, if you try to play, um, so that the, um, the intervals properly follow the harmonic series or whatever, and those actual like ratios and stuff, that is called just intonation. That is a thing. Um, imagine an alternate world. Where uh where uh, uh just intonation uh uses notes that resonate with magic of the world uh and would cause actual catastrophic damage because like because like imagine imagine just like imagine going like you're you're in you're in the old days before they made the new tuning and then you played. This this major chord C E G C E G. Congratulations, you have just manifested Da, May, and Sor all at the same time. What does that cause? Shit, random shit. Like imagine just randomly creating elements. Bard. It's, it's bard. Yeah. Um. So issues would arise, and so. The um the proper response to that would be well clearly let's uh you know f not have it correct, um, and then as such it went from fourteen because the 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 gaps the gaps are the the, the gaps got removed they got gone the <laughs> gone <laughs> got gone um. The gaps got removed to instead of having 14 tet, you have 12 tet, and it is, it sounds, it it, do, it doesn't cause catastrophic damage. Does this make any sense? I don't yes. know if this makes any sense. <laughs> You're just saying bard. It does to you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Ah, uh, what the? I, I should I should also mention, <laughs> as a DMD nerd, of course. Nice. Okay. Um. <laughs> What else was I going to mention? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, by the way, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, E sharp, this is talking 14 tet, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, E, E sharp, uh, wait, wait, what, what? I, I somehow screwed up somewhere. F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, I, that's where I screwed up, God. Uh, A sharp, B, B sharp. These two are the, uh, the 1410. What? I, I thought you were clapping for a second, so I, I no. did the clap again. So there, there's, there's the thing. There's the thing. What else do I have to talk about? Have to. Required by law. Oh, wait. Actually, hold on. I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, there was a reason I opened this. The thing. There it is. What even is that again? The place. It's the metronome place. Oh, that's... Oh, uh, right, yeah. It's the metronome. I'm now visualizing... Uh... Right after you open the door, <laughs> you see like a bunch of you see just a fall and a few cubes slowly falling down, and when you <coughs> fall, they speed up with you. Yeah. God, I'm lo I'm losing my mind just like looking at these tabs. Just like oh, we have we have math. We have uh, we have that's just a random tab I had open. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> this thing. This is directly related to the resonance thing, actually. I haven't looked at this in so long. What is square one? 
Uh, what is like the top company? What evil book? company. What does why? I'm honestly not entirely sure. I'll just say that off the bat. Modern keys. Not very. Evil squares. See, right here we have. It's the normal. The normal. And we changed the sharp, so now it's starting at dull. Rain. Saying there's nothing there. Saying there's nothing there. There we go. And then this is pure to toning. Uh, toning? Toning, that's a new word. Okay, now I should mention this text on the bottom here. Uh, audio inf interference added to diminish harmful properties of pure uh, tuning. So, or whatever it says, pure, pure tones. So, you know how earlier like, I was saying uh, they resonate with shit and cause shit? Uh, the idea is that this weird wacky sound you're hearing in the background uh, is just off enough that um, it makes the uh, the tones slightly more impure to the point where it would not cause damage. Basically, uh, it's 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 it, it's impuring the tones so that you can actually hear them without worrying about weird shit happening. And then you have. And you can see the gray keys. So that's like... And then changing the flats. Also, Where's look at that. Teak, teak Took. It's doing it there, too. Where's Mock? For e for every Teak, there has to be a Took, so there's Teak Took. Where's Mock? And then that fades out. What did you say, Elliot? Where would Mock be? Where would Mock be? Uh, is there a particular ask- uh, qu uh, Is there a particular qu What? Is there a particular reason you're asking this? I'll- uh, uh, no, because it's just not on the written there. Because everything else, other than colorless ones. But yeah, well, I mean, I'm asking because there, there, there was a, uh, there, there was a lore thing. It was a lore thing that implied that Mock did have a tone. Uh, it's not a musical tone. I'll say that. Uh, I think the, I think generally the idea is that like there are other tones. It's just like it feels more like timbre, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Um, like, uh, like it, it's kind of out of your range of hearing, I guess you would say, basically. I, the reason that this sure. resident thing exists is it's a reference to this room's resonating with every single song Caden works on in the world. <laughs> God. The dog whistle. It's just a dog whistle. <laughs> well, let me read up on them. Discord real quick. <clears throat> no. I won't. Okay. ARG? Guys, this is an ARG. Where's the comment that says not scary? Oh yeah, hold on, real quick. Um, so this was a, uh, I, I'm pretty sure people already know this, because I've mentioned this several times. Uh, but, tuning reference tape is a it's the teaser video for Voronoise. And if you look at Voronoise... <laughs> one of the tracks is titled, We Make Abysmally Rancid Garbage Goshen 2. Abysmally Rancid Garbage is ARG. 
A A R G. We we make A R G. Ta da. Oh, yes, actually, I forgot about this. Yes, it's it, so here's the idea here. Um, the reason why it's called from this side is because the idea is um, so it's an intentionally bad intro. I should mention this from the side is supposed to act as like a pre intro for the uh, for antimatter, which is kind of like the closest thing to a single for this album, uh, despite the fact that like. You know, it's to scare away if, all the fake Hubo nerds. In in terms of in terms of theming and like like stuff, uh, uh, antimatter would be the single. However, if I had to like say like oh, uh, if I were forced to delete all of this album or all of this EP except for one track, it would be Gaussian Two, because uh, Gaussian Two is a banger, and it's like the only, it's it's the one that you should listen to, but. Thematically, Antimatter is the most important, probably, because uh, it's the most, like, Voro noisy track. Anyways, point is, um, from the side, it's supposed to sound intentionally bad. Uh, it's supposed to sound like, just, like, you know, hold on, listen to this. I mean, listen to it. Why do Emerald look like that? It's it's very obviously live recorded. I didn't quantize it at all. Like five minutes to this little bit. Why do the emeralds look like this? What is this? The the May door. No, it's the door. It's the website May door. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot about the video quality there. Uh, but yeah, okay, so. Um, this, this entire EP is very clearly, like, it's intentionally very gritty and not polished. Um, uh, not, not for, like, any lore reason, honestly. It just kind of is. And, uh, I, I, I think, like, that, um... It just mood-wise feels right. I, I, yeah, it just feels right, you know? And also, it took me, uh, an, an, another thing. Uh, fun fact, um, tracks like Antimatter, uh, date back a while. Let me try to think. Um, yeah, because Antimatter was originally, because Parallax was originally going to be a double single, and it was going to be Parallax followed by Antimatter. However, I couldn't figure out how to finish Antimatter, so I just was like, okay, whatever, I have to release something, and I released Parallax on its own. Um, so that's a fun fact, first of all. Um, this would have been the B side to Parallax. Um, however, uh, after a while, uh, I came across this project file again, and I was like, oh, this would probably fit for Voronoise, considering what I'm going for there. Because the whole idea of Almighty Wheel as an artist uh, is that um, it's essentially built off of ideas that I cannot imagine what they sound like in my head. That's basically what it is. Um, Stuff that, like, conceptually it's simple, but then I'm like, I have no idea what that would sound like. Uh, for example, one track... I, oh, well, hold on. Um, like, I'm trying to think of if there's a good example in here, because it's a little difficult to describe with this. Because uh, Antimatter... Okay, listen to the... Listen, listen to the melodies. There's like the 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 melodies are in fourteen, first of all, uh, fourteen tet, 
Ooh, the thing. Uh, which is why they sound so fucking whack. Um, in addition, um, uh, they use rhythms that are just completely fucking impossible to play live. Um, it, 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 just completely. Uh, it's They're doing arpeggios, they're way too fast, they're just, like, scattering around in ways that are just, like, completely... Yeah, you get the point. Um, so, like, the whole idea of Almighty Wheel is that's really, like, playing into the idea of, like, um, digital ideas, I guess you could say. Like, things that you can, like, imagine the concept for, but you can't imagine what it would sound like. And things that, like, you can make them digitally, but you can't make them physically, if that makes sense. I don't know. Something like that. Um, and... Uh, that's kind of, I guess, in a way, that makes the um, the grittiness thing kind of make sense, because it's, like, kind of playing into that kind of aesthetic. But, anyways, point is, um, yeah, this this whole album has some we- fucking weird-sounding shit on it, and, um, and it's very intentionally not polished up. And, uh, oh, wait, I was going to mention, God, sorry. Another fun fact about why this wasn't a very polished project. Um, it was actually released, uh, so, like I said, Antimatter was going to be a B-side for Parallax, I didn't finish it. I revisited it later, not including instances like that where I, like, revisited a project file after a while, because Goshen 2 is also a little bit like that. Because um, I was talking in a Discord server with Dachi, and uh, Dachi sent a kick pattern, and I took that kick pattern, and I threw the weird echo delay on top of it that makes up parts of the song. The, the thumping here. Dachi made, like, a speedcore, um, kick pattern, and then I, like, threw delay and reverb on it, and it made this really weird, like, thumpy kind of sound, and then that was, like, kind of the basis for a little song idea I made called Brain Hell, of all things, and then, uh, because I was expecting it to be a, um, a, uh, a headbang track, which is not an artist's name that I've released anything under yet, but it's the rain Tomasaur. And, uh... <laughs> uh... But instead it ended up here. So, you know. But anyway, uh, uh, sorry. I'm, the point I'm trying to get at here, because a really funny fact about this album, is that not including all these times where I, like, left the project file on its own, uh, which were just, like, Antimatter's first half the uh, the crazy parts in antimatter at the start, uh, not including like the more ambient parts, and uh, the very very beginning of Gaussian two, like literally like almost none of that track, quite literally just like the little melody at the beginning and the percussion and that was it, um, and then I think everything else was made in a week. Uh, Voronoi's was pretty much made in a week. Uh, it was, uh, we, it was just like, and, and that, 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 that's the thing I've kind of realized is that after all this time, uh, the, my strategy for getting shit done is to just be patient as all hell. Just like, just lie down and just wait for like the, uh, the inspiration to strike me suddenly. Cause, uh, it's just, yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, why is my thing frozen on that? What the hell? It says, yeah, same here, and it's just not showing. Oh, there we go. That was weird. Um, but yeah, I just have to, like, wait for the inspiration to strike. In fact, honestly, I'll, I'll be honest and transparent here for a second. Uh, uh, Cartesian Vertical is so, like, not even, like, halfway done, and I'm still doing teasers for it. Um, Mainly because, like, a big thing about the teasers is that they're, like, good, like, um, what's the word? Like, uh, motivation, you know? Like, seeing seeing people excited for the stuff, like, helps me, like, get motivated and helps me get shit done. 
And also on top of that, I'm not worried about like making uh, promises I can't keep or something like that because Cartesian Vertical is going to release. However, because uh, Cartesian Vertical, I mean Cartesian Horizontal came out already, so canceling Vertical would just feel incorrect in, to me in every way. Uh, like I, I, I. I I, this might be a weird hot take, but I would rather release Vertical in, like, a bad state than not at all. Um, considering, like, 90% of what makes Horizontal interesting is what it's going to be like in comparison <laughs> to Vertical. So, yeah. But anyways, point is... Uh, 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 yeah, so I knew that this album was very, like, gritty and very not polished in its entirety. And so I was like, okay, I need to start this album in a way that like rips the bandaid off. And it's like, yes, I'm aware of that. That's like the entire point of the album. And so I decided to do this track from the side. This was actually just the intro to antimatter, but I split it off into its own track and I made it, um, this really sloppily done, uh, live intro thing. Uh, it's very, it's technically one of the better mixed parts of the entire album in a way, because it's like, you can hear all the parts just fine, but it's also very plain, very boring. There's not any like real experimental stuff happening, like all that. And then it quite literally just throws you into the actual like heart of the project. And, uh, in comparison to this, it's like, oh, all of these, like, bad parts of this song are actually better than this. You know? Like, it, it's, it feels so much more interesting in comparison. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, From the Side feels very much like something I would have made um, when I was, like, younger and didn't know what was I was doing. And then this is like, oh, yeah, I'm uh, this is intentional, you know? Uh, and a big part of it is, like, I'm, I'm kind of playing at the uh, that a little bit here, too, because the idea is, is kind of like, this is playing back to the previous era, which was themed around race laws, looks hemi, which is white, and it's... Uh, perpendicular to this era, I guess you could say, which is race law as long as law, because it's like Toma, Tom Tomaro and real world. From the side is like canonically the real world, kind of. And then the rest of the album is like this. I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. But yeah, it's like playing into that a little bit. And then, it, and then this thing is, you can see it rotating and going into full the view. Also, from this side, like, oh, you're in the real world, and now you're looking into this world, that whole idea. So, like, you're, like you're looking through a window or a door or something like that. Okay. Or a bed. Or a bed, yeah. <coughs> Shit, Trick 5 is so fucking good. <coughs> Shout out to Verser. Ooh, my voice. Ooh, my voice is upset with me right now. Um, ugh. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about today. Uh, elevation. Ooh. Ooh. Also, I should mention, I want to, one of these days, like, do a, um, like, one of these days, I want to listen over my old projects and, like, uh, give, like, a developer commentary for all of them. Probably, preferably in a way that it's, like, uh, I'm in this voice chat and people can ask questions as we go along as well. Because uh, I have a lot of shit to say about, like, literally every project I've made. Uh, I think the one that I really don't have a lot to say about is probably Stand By, but even then, like, it's it's not as little as you would expect for a project like that, so it's like, you know, Ugh. I have 
I have too many words. Too many of them. The canvas. I keep just clicking shit at this point. My throat hurts. I think I'm go I think I'm gonna get off at this point because I've how long have I been talking? I don't know when I started doing this. Hold on. I can look at my thing. Uh, trinkets. 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 This is how, this is how it starts. Trinkets. 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 This is how this the video, video starts. starts. Still, Still really, really small. small. Yeah. yeah. Good, Good enough. enough. Also, it's going to be gonna funny because of some... Yeah, it's been like a straight five hours or something. Because it says that that file was created uh, noon. So, like, five... <clears throat> It's 5.27 now. Oh my god. Mm. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm going to stop for now. I, I, it, you know? Uh, I'm going to upload this maybe right now? I'll put it on B-sides. But, um... Uh... Yeah, if anyone here is re-watching... If anyone here is re-watching... Any nerds? Uh, if you have any, if you, if you, if you're curious about stuff, let me know. I guess, including Toma stuff, because I, I talked about some of it, but <coughs> not as much as I thought. I ended up just talking about a lot of project stuff. Why is Toma have two blue? Two blue? What? Why is there three blue? Three blue? Four blue? Four blue? <laughs> Why is the full blue? It was the full blue. How much of this is gonna be on the test? Uh, uh, uh yes. You're you've already lost. Don't worry. What what's the what's what does colorless mean? What does colorless mean? Yeah. Uh. Why are some colorless and why is Nan not part of the tree? Oh. Uh, that's a good question. So okay, one thing. So. Hold on. Quick little thing here. So, there's, there's like, four different levels for what there's these... four? Yeah, four. There's four different levels for what these different uh, symbols are. Like, hi... 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 Hierarchy. Hey, thank you. Hi hierarchy? Hierarchy, yeah. Hierarchy. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Whatever. You get what I mean. Like, uh... This is made up of this, and it is under this, that, that whole idea. Um, this, it, theta is the root of almost all Toma. Uh, Toma. Toma. Nan is also a root. However, it is, uh, it, it has nothing under it, and it has nothing above it. The, the main thing is that roots have nothing above it, okay? It's, it's like... It just holds everything or nothing. Uh, nan, nan means absence of everything, so nothing, uh, or essence of nothing. And then theta means ab uh, <laughs> essence of everything. Uh, so in a way, actually similar to hemi and semi. However, semi and hemi are <laughs> absence and inclusion of something, so a, a thing, matter. But but this is um uh like so heavy, everything. Semi is just uh semi is just racism. Yeah. No, Elliot, you weren't here earlier. Uh, we were joking that um uh technically semi demi means uh end racism. <laughs> the racist Toma. Uh, but um <clears throat> but yeah. So these are the roots because they don't have anything above them, they're just the root of something. Uh, although man doesn't have anything under it. Uh, and then coming off of that, you have the layers. The layers. You have the three layers. You have ISO, CLEF, and TRIAL. It took me a second, sorry. Uh, you can tell I'm tired. Um, That's the most forgettable name. Yeah, so root... And then you have a layer. 
And then you have, I want to say this is class, if I remember correctly. Oh, shit. 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 Bro! And then that is under the layer. And then you have, finally, signs, which are under the class. So, for, uh, for every root... There, for every root, there is either three or no layers. For every layer, there is three classes. For every class, there is three signs. And to be more specific, uh, the three in question is always labeled as minus, plus minus, and plus. Okay, and uh, so when you go down the line, you'll notice, okay, so uh, plus minus, minus, plus. So, sta is plus minus, minus, plus. You also have plus, minus, uh, and then this, this is, uh, because Tau is uh, semi, demi, hemi, so they're colored, so they end up down here. Um, semi is minus, plus. Oops, sorry. So this is plus, minus, plus. Looks like a face. I wonder if that is going to come and play at all. It's <laughs> <laughs> the <their> guy. <clears throat> it looks like a dude. It's the guy. It looks like a traumatized dude. Is that is that character concept actually a thing or is that yes. old? It is, it, plus minus plus is yeah. Uh, I have no idea. We'll we'll see. It would be interesting. It it makes me very happy seeing all these accidental uh, crossovers. It's very cool. It makes them feel more like that they're actually a set. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and I, and I should mention, because... Uh, so when you have three symbols like this, that, that, that always points to a sign, because it's four layers down. Uh, so you go, you go one direction, you go another direction, you go one another direction, direction starting at the root. Uh... uh However, if you want to point at a class or a layer or the root, then you instead use a theta symbol, which is just the, the, the you know. Um, so, for example, minus neutral plus ends up at square. So that's a minus neutral plus that, that ends up at quad, would. Whatever. Um, however, you could point at this by doing minus. Uh, fucking hell. Minus plus minus theta. So now that's that cir that circle. The circle. There it is. Right there. There it is. The circle. And then I could say theta theta. Or sorry. Minus. Theta, theta. Wow, ISO. Or I could say theta, 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 which is the root. And then finally, nan acts differently, because of fucking course it does. Nan is just nan, nan, nan. Now it should also be mentioned that you could convert these into numbers. Uh, if you if you can if you think of all of this, like first of all, ignore the theta and nan ones right now. Let's look back at the signs. You can think of them like numbers, okay? Because the cool thing is that since you know it, it's like trinary, okay? It's like trinary. This is one. This is two. This is three. 
this is four, this is five, et cetera, et cetera. You just keep going. And then it ends at plus, 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 which is one, uh, two, and then three, which is toque. It ends at toque. It ends at toque. Wouldn't the six be... Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I'm just realizing. I, uh, I, I swapped these for some reason. It's supposed to be... That, and then, uh, one, two, three, uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay. But yeah, it, it goes minus plus minus plus, uh, it's just trinary, but instead of writing it as zeros, ones, and twos, you write it as minus plus minus plus. It's, it's polarity. Um. And then, because of this, you can find out exactly how many signs there are. Keyword signs, we're not including classes or layers. Uh, if we go base calculator, and we change this to base 3, and then we give it, uh, what? Oh, this is not what I thought this was. <laughs> base converter, that's what I was looking for, okay. We can give it three and then convert it to decimal. And then we type in th uh, two to two, which is plus 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 written in base uh, three. And then you get 26. So now you know there is 26 signs. And sure enough, uh, if you open this, you should be able to count that. Uh, Remember when this was the outro? What? Remember when yeah, this shut was up, the outro? shut up. Ignore that. <laughs> One, so we got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Did I do that wrong? Oh, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Wait, did I do that wrong? Wait, oh, wait, twenty-seven. Wait, how did I get one off? Wait, hold on. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Oh, oh, wait, no, 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 I know why. It's because um, this one is written as minus, 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 which is zero. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's getting, it's, it's, uh, you're counting the first one that's doing weird shit. Okay, I think it is correct. I think so. Would it be the same as three, uh, to the power of three, three, six? Wait, I know. What is three to the power of three? I think it, I think it is like that. It says here, um, uh, because the way decimal, the way the calculation works is two times three to the second power, two times it's first digit times three to the second power. Second digit times three to the first power, third digit three to the zero, which is the same as times one because of funny math stuff. Uh, if that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> Hold on, let me just type this in chat. Uh, A, B, no, why did it, it, it deleted my fucking thing? Hold on. Two, one, zero. See. No, I don't want to. There we go. Uh, that's the thing. That's the thing to get from base three to base ten. <coughs> A, B, C being the digits, and then zero, zero, zero will become zero. Ooh, this is yeah. Okay, okay, that makes sense now. Um. Anyways, uh. Oh. Uh, funny thing about that, though, uh, the um, the value for the classes ends up being a range because of that. If you tried to convert the uh, like their thing to a number, it becomes a range. 
So, uh, like, the, the easiest one would be this, because that's the first one, and I know off the top of my head, this is the first one, okay? And this is minus, 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 which is zero, one, two, which is minus, minus, plus for this one. So minus, minus theta is the same as minus, 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 plus, minus, 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 plus. All added together. So minus, minus theta is written as a range of zero, 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 zeros, or, well, it would, zero to two, like this, with square brackets. Isn't that, isn't that so cool? And then, it, and then it goes, it goes like that. It goes. Oh. I should end off. Well. Hold on. Let me let me give. Okay. This is this is such a specific thing. I kept forgetting to show this. Uh, ra random little uh, this a fun fact thing. You know how earlier I was saying um, if you take semi and hemi or hold on. You know how earlier I was like, oh look, it's a mountain. At the very beginning of all this shit, we had a mountain. We clicked rotate, and oh my god, it's a valley now. Holy shit, that's interesting. Because that means that although we typically think... Hi, Barnum. Although we typically think of... Uh, this as being semi and this as being hemi. When you flip it, it it's the other way around. It's the other way around. It's just they're they're two different things being separated by demi. Okay, is is it's it's so it's so interesting. Yeah, same for me. <laughs> my voice hurts. I'm not even kidding. My voice actually hurts. Um. So this same idea of if you look at something from an opposite angle, it acts the opposite direction. Actually, also applies to this, funnily enough. Because as I was mentioning earlier, teak means the start of time, and tuk means the end of time, and mock means, like, the timeline itself. Uh, but, uh, there is something that, funnily enough, flips it around. Uh, because if you think about it, so, um, uh, how do I describe this? So, like, if you think of tempo, for example, uh, Teak would be turning down the tempo, and Tuke would be turning up the tempo. Uh, and if you think of length, Teak would be making it shorter, and Tuke would be making it longer. Now the problem is, as you probably can tell, um, if you turn down the tempo of something, it gets longer. Uh, so, paradoxically, uh, Teak means to make something faster, which in turn makes it shorter. But it also means to make something shorter, which in turn makes it slower. So it's it's doing this same kind of thing of like if you flip it, it the distinction between the two is a little less obvious, but there's clearly a line between them that is still forcing them to not collide with each other. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, ge generally, the way it works is that teak means to turn a number down, and tuk means to turn a number up. So, with a spot in a timeline, teak would be off at the very start, because, you know, it's the negative end of the timeline. Positive end would be tuk. Uh, that, that's where the polarity comes in. Um, minus, plus. Uh... And then, uh, so as, so, you know, uh, this would include BPM going down, this would include, uh, uh, 
amount of time going down, this would uh, shorten, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then this means make something longer, make something faster because you're going up in tempo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That kind of thing. And Mock is there. We, 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 the the baby. The baby. Okay. Uh, I don't, don't. Well, actually, I should send this in chat. Sending all these fucking images in chat. Fuck these images. What? Why did that happen? There we go. Send this one as well. Uh, this is not something I want to save. Um, this is not something I want to save. This is fire. This is fire. This is kind of just redundant, but there it is anyways. Um, last thing I want to leave with, uh, because my, my throat fucking hurts. Um, so there, there's a, there's a silly thing if you think about it, because, um, there, there is space for more, like, there, you, there technically could be more, more, um, and the, the reality, uh, because I was showing earlier all these numbers, I was showing, ooh, this is a number, and then you have this one, which is a range, However, then that this this begs the question: uh, What happens if you tried to do this? That's weird. What is that? What is that thing? The big nose. What 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 is that referring to? That's the teeth. Because that would be plus, and then one of these, or all of them actually, all of these, at the same time. And then you get the plus of them. So that would be the spiral, that would be Tuke, and that would be Hemi. Or wait, hold on, let me think. Because uh, Tuke, uh, Hemi, uh, Tuke, Tuke, what the fuck? And then um, Spy. These are these are all three of the things that get grabbed up by this somehow, uh, and the, the but the problem is is that these all have different parents, and so it's like what uh, what is this? Is this a thing? This is a pseudo pseudo. It's a pseudo. What? It's a pseudo. Like a dofi. A dofi pseudo. Um. No, uh, it's a pseudo. It's like kind of a class or layer or something, but it also doesn't entirely exist. It's like, it's difficult to know what actually, if it's real or if it's just like... It's imaginary numbers. It's, it's the imaginary numbers. It's the imaginary numbers of Toba in a way. Because it's like, okay... It's a little abstract. It's probably not a real element, necessarily. But it is also something that we could feasibly attach to a symbol. And we could think of symbols that way. And the question is... Oh. Oh. Well, uh, uh, what are they? They're the symbols of our reality. It's, 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 it's the symbols of our reality. So that's just A... God. And there's another one which is A, D, B, C, D. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's what I'm gonna end with right now. Oh, actually, there is one more thing. Actually, I might as well throw this out here. Um, another thing. There is. Uh, How many other things? Well, there's there's just one thing I might as well throw out because Blooping was joking about this earlier, and it's sort of a thing actually. Um, uh, it, th this is this is a lot more of like an aesthetic thing. It's even more. Um, you know how you have like uh, languages like Japanese and Korean and Chinese and stuff like that, 
that um, they have a lot of parts in one symbol. Like, the symbol refers to one word, but it's, like, made up of a bunch of parts, a bunch of, like, little glyphs that are over each other and stuff. Uh, so there's there's some... Um, all the projects of... Um, all the projects I've worked on, I actually give, like, their own little symbols, and they pretty much... They count in that kind of way, actually. Um... Tomoro and Kanji. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we, we, like, we have all these things. We have all these things. Look at all those things. And not all these are actually, like, Toma-related in Italy. So, they're a lot more, like, picture-y, you know? But there are ones that do very clearly feel like the closest thing to, like, uh, <laughs> Tomoro... Kanji, why do you see Drend? That was um, that was bits. That was Bitstorm. That was oh, Bitstorm. just Bitstorm. Yeah, just Bitstorm the single, because that's that's gonna be the single for season oh, right. three. Um, but there is there is uh, there is some important ones uh like this. Uh, why can Nan move? Why? It's, I'll, 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 hold on, that might be for a different time. Uh, or actually, hold on. I'll just I'll just leave this here as a little tidbit for someone to ask me about later. Uh, Nan, it's it's pointing down. It's pointing decreasing. This line is pointing up. So that's positive, uh, Nan. But Nan doesn't exist, so <laughs> this is pointing up. Okay, ask me about that later. Um. Anyways, so back to this. Uh, this is this is uh, the album cover for album eight, uh, probably. Uh, album eight, I will say. No, the thing after Cartesian, uh, vertical and horizontal. Well, horizontal's already out, but you know what I mean. It's Cartesian um, diagonal. It's real. Hold on. So we got we got a circle. We got a circle. It's a very cool circle. We have, uh, so. Uh, so hold on. Let, let me let me reiterate this. The reason why Elliot was asking why Nan spins is because sometimes Nan will be written the opposite direction, and it's technically can be considered to be like any direction. Uh, it's just like they have different connotations, kind of. Usually, it's this way where it goes down. Um, one thing you'll notice about this is that there's actually there's two Nans on top of each other. Uh, you have Nan, and you have a Nan perpendicular to it. Uh, you have Nan down and Nan up at the same time, making this circle and X thing. However, you also have tick these tick marks. Toe. You have these tick marks. You have these tick marks. You have these tick marks. Which makes hash. Uh, hash is the number eight. So this means Nan Nan eight... Basically, it's it's two nans and then eight on top of each other. Um, now this is a reference because uh, reminder that color cal uh, color colorful shatters was the last project of that era of the first era, and so this is basically saying colorful shatters plus colorful shatters. So it's the second one. Um, it's it's not a colorful shatters project. I should point that out, uh, but it has the same like point to it uh it's it's meant as the end of this era and so it's revisiting that twice um and it's also uh perpendicular for reasons it's also pointing out specifically that it's eight yeah nan, nan is the end yeah eight okay um finally so, fun fact about Cartesian Vertical. Cartesian Vertical is, was a project that was originally going to be called uh, Special Characters Volume 1, which was something I actually teased at at one point in community posts. And, uh, like, there was a poll where people got to decide, like, what project I should release next, and that was the one. However, it ended up getting cancelled separately. Uh, because I just, like, I lost interest in it. 
uh, it was this idea where there was going to be it was a seven track EP each EP with a different artist uh, character in fact I actually mentioned I, I mentioned this in the seven Rit video actually uh, the teaser video I'm back uh, so you've probably heard of it uh, if you have seen that but um, uh, it got cancelled because only two songs ended up getting to a finished state like at all uh, by finished state I mean as in like it had a beginning middle and end it needed like polishing up but it was like we had a full track idea uh, the, everything else was just like not going the direction I wanted it to go and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on and I, I do want to do that again at some point I just have to do it at a point where I'm like project jumping more instead of focusing on one project at a time uh which I know is going to happen, so it's for another day. But anyways, point is, uh, special characters kind of at this point has morphed into Cartesian Vertical, which is also seven tracks. <coughs> also has relations to, uh, like, the Cubo Rainbow um, and, like, different t uh, bits of Toma and stuff like that. Um... Uh, uh, fun fact, Cloud Music is actually, uh, which is the bonus track for Cartesian Vertical, which is, that bonus track is out already. Um, uh, that was actually one of the two songs that was, uh, created for special characters. Uh, specifically it was the, uh, Ray Tomasaur one. Um, uh, what else do I have to say about this? Um... But um, at this point, uh, it's it's kind of like it, it, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Uh, I don't want to like spoil too much about the project after Cartesian Vertical because you know I'm focusing on Vertical at the moment. Uh, but um, the project after Vertical, this one, uh, is essentially the closest thing to Cartesian Diagonal. Um, and as such, uh, I have, I have that other track that I, um, haven't released from Special Characters, which I'm going to, at some point, probably just release as its own little single thing. Uh, as just, like, a bonus. It's not an amazing track, I'll just say that, uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of cool. I don't know how to describe it. It's, like, almost a Voronoise, uh, outro. I mean, outro outtake. It's almost like a Voronoi's out outtake. Um, and, uh, and I'm gonna kind of play into how, <laughs> at this point, the, um, album 8 has basically become Cartesian diagonal a little bit, uh, because here, uh, let, let's, let's say this. Hold on. See my screen here? Okay, so. Vertical, horizontal. And we got a diagonal, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah. You know. You know. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you have Cartesian right here, because the whole, the whole idea is that Cartesian horizontal and Cartesian vertical are, uh, perpendicular to each other, uh, because, uh, um, uh, Cartesian horizontal is based more in reality, and Cartesian Vertical is based more in lore. Um, uh, and also, uh, when I say that two things are perpendicular to each other, it's it's like, you know how when things are in parallel, they follow the same path next to each other? Um, the idea of things being perpendicular would be that they either have two... They, they take the same path, but they end up at completely opposite exit points, or 
they take completely different paths and they end up at the same exit point. And the latter is true for Cartesian vertical and horizontal. Uh, both the two albums are completely like opposite from each other, apart from the fact that they have the same skeleton, but they end up at the same place. That's how I would describe it. Um, and the whole thing acts like a whole double album s scenario, uh, which creepily enough, I realized this, I forgot about this. I, uh, I intentionally set up mitosis and the cycle to be seven tracks. Uh, and it just so happens that uh, Cartesian Horizontal and Vertical are both seven tracks. So, in a way, uh, Season 2 of uh, uh, Zone 440 kind of is like the Bubbles equivalent of Cartesian, weirdly enough. But I, I don't know if there's going to be any other parallels or perpendiculars there, you know. But <laughs> just keep that in mind, I guess. Um, uh... Uh, anyways, the point is, uh, Cartesian works as one big project, one double album, and then the project after that, that I, again, will not spoil, this one, uh, is going to be perpendicular to that, to Cartesian as a whole. So it's like, so it's you have horizontal, you have vertical, and then you have whatever the hell this is called. An X. You have forward and backward. There's no actual word for that. I tried to look it up. There's no word well, for it. Um, you could talk about... It's, it's just a different kind of horizontal. But it's it's horizontal uh, in, in perpendicular to the horizontal we've been talking about. Um, if you want to go four-dimensional, you could say, like, Nim. But that that's, uh, that's another can of worms. Yeah. But yeah, so... There you, there you go. Cartesian diagonal. It's it's just 3D. You thought you thought it was 2D, it's 3D. Plot twist. Uh, I think I think that's everything. Uh this is so for 40 album samplers when I don't know if I have anything to say about those, even if I I should talk about them at some point genuinely, but <sighs> 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 All right, I'm done talking. <laughs> For real. Uh, uh, please listen to Cartesian Vertical when it comes out. I don't know how long it will take. Uh, my, my, my motivation has been whack lately, so it's probably going to be a while, but... Please, for the, lo for the love of everything... Oh, here's my hair. Would you like my hair? Yes. If you buy Cartesian complete on CD, you will get a strand of my hair. That would be the that would be the greatest uh like thing to include. Hold on, didn't Apex be... Twin do something like that? Or is that was that a shit post? Um I saw a post on the Apex Twin subreddit that was something like, hey, does anyone know where to get uh like the special versions of um this album that included Apex Twin's hair? And I'm like that sounds so like him, but I also have no idea how to fact check that. Like, there's, I, I don't know. Let's just search up on Google Apex Twin Hair Special Version. Twin Hair Bonus Item. I can't believe I'm asking this. The Lock of Richard's Hair, uh, Richard D. James album has a freebie rumor. It's true. Yeah, you, you just. You, you get Richard D. James on vinyl, and it comes with uh, a lock of his hair, of his beautiful hair. <laughs> what is that mask? Isn't that cool? I can't see it. It's blocked. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> he looks like the German guy face. Yeah. yeah. When the impos- When the impussy? Really? What? What, you did, what not, did I just say? You did not say impussy. I hate it so much because puss is not a very happy word as well. Because puss is a real word. And it's like, oh, gross oozy stuff. Like, no. No.
Ah, why did I click that? Yeah, I... I wow, it, it's gonna be reissued and expanded on October 4th? Holy shit, I should get that, guys. I should get it. I should get that. Would you get this? I don't like that. <laughs> 